Hello there, welcome to ITV News Meridian in the Thames Valley. Your headlines this Monday evening. <laughs> Nurses and ambulance workers picket in Oxford and Reading, the first of two days of action. Staff who've been on the wards for decades say they've no other choice. I've been a nurse now for 45 years. We're already short of nurses. We can't afford to lose any more. The meadow in Oxford, home to a rare white badger. But can children convince planners to abandon plans for affordable homes? Also tonight, deadly drinking habits, the rise in alcohol dependency and how it's costing more lives every year in our region. And is downsizing just a myth? The over 60s sitting pretty in their homes and why they've no plans to move. Good evening. It's been the biggest round of strikes to hit the health service. Both nurses and ambulance staff walked out today in their ongoing dispute with the government over pay and working conditions. More strikes will follow later in the week. Pressure is mounting on the Prime Minister to enter negotiations, given health strikes in Wales were paused recently following an improved pay offer. And Scottish walkouts were put on hold to allow further talks. But so far, the government isn't moving. Well, we join nurses on the picket lines in Reading and in Oxford. Natalie Verney sent this report. The atmosphere might seem jovial, but this is no laughing matter. These nurses are desperate willing to sacrifice another day's pay and face the cold in the hope things will change. We're being put in situations where we're caring for double our workload. Um, the skill mix is really bad as well. So you've got nurses who are newly qualified or not particularly highly skilled at the moment in jobs in areas where they shouldn't be. They should be being supported and there's no one to support them. So safety wise for patients and for staff, we're in a really bad situation at the moment. They say they're dangerously understaffed because the pay is too low. Every single person I spoke to knew multiple colleagues who'd left the profession. Karen, who's been a nurse for 45 years, says they can't afford to stay. Nurses leave, it puts more pressure on those nurses who are there. So then they get tired, they get stressed, they're asked to work extra hours, work, um, so they end up ending up working seven days a week. And they get very tired, so then they go, because they just cannot do it. It's just incredibly hard. Um, so it's for that. And I'm going to retire in about three years. <clears throat> I want to know that when I need them, they're going to be there. And I can't guarantee that now. There are fewer staff on the picket line today than there have been on previous days. I've been told it's not because they don't want to be here, it's because the staff who are paid the least, who in many ways this strike is about, can't afford to lose another day's pay. The government says it can't give above inflation pay rises because that would push up inflation and make all of us worse off. But industrial action has already been suspended in Scotland after the government there offered staff more. And walkouts in Wales have been called off after ministers put forward an improved pay offer. It would be great if the government could look at what's happening in Wales and Scotland and actually start sitting around the table, opening the door and with Pat Cullen and sitting around the table and actually having those honest, robust conversations, but it's just not happening. And that's immensely frustrating for our nurses here in England. The NHS is facing three more walkouts later this week. 88,000 appointments have already been cancelled. It will only add to the waiting lists and the pressure hospitals are already facing. Natalie Verney, ITV News. Well, the government insists it won't reopen talks about this year's pay deal for the nurses, but says there could be more money for them in the next pay deal, which would take effect in April. Uh, let's cross to our political correspondent, Phil Hornby, for more. Phil, in the short term, at least, at least no sign of the government budging over this issue. No, that's right, Matt. The health secretary went to an emergency meeting here at Westminster this afternoon, but it wasn't about solving the strike. It was about coping with its consequences. 10,000 cancelled operations so far. On safety and staffing levels, the government insists they are recruiting lots more nurses and lots more doctors. But as you say, on pay, they won't talk about this year's pay round. They say they'll only talk about next year's that would come in, in, into effect, as you say, in April. Here is the health secretary. Well, we have been discussing this coming year from April's pay 
uh, with the unions. Uh, we have the process through the pay review body. It's an independent process and we're keen to get the evidence to that that reflects the pressure that the NHS has been under and the wider context in terms of inflation. I don't think it's right to go back to last year, to last April, retrospectively. We should be looking forward to the pay review body uh, that is taking evidence now and working constructively with the trade unions in terms of ensuring that the evidence that goes to the pay review body reflects the wider pressure that the NHS has been under. There's a feeling here that if this was just a health workers dispute it might well have been settled by now but what the government are worried about is if they seem to quote give in to the nurses and the ambulance workers then the train drivers, the teachers, the university lecturers, the border force workers will all say well if it's good enough for the health workers it should be good enough for us too. OK, Phil, for now, thank you. Two young men have been killed when the car they were in came off the road and hit a tree near Henley-on-Thames. It happened on Friday night on the A4130 between Bix and Nettlebed. A 22-year-old man from Reading and a 19-year-old man from Henley died at the scene. Their families are being supported by specialist officers. Police say they are keen to speak to anyone who may have seen the red BMW travelling before the crash or has dash cam footage. Police are looking for two men after a fight in Oxford left a man with head injuries. CCTV images have been released of two men who may have information about the assault on Corn Market Street in the early hours of Saturday the 28th of January. A man in his 20s was kicked to the ground but has since been discharged from hospital. A lorry driver has been banned from driving for two years for crashing into an advertising sign while twice over the drink drive limit. The screen was left embedded in the lorry's cab at Cherwell Valley Services on the M40 a week ago. 36-year-old Ihar Kudzelka of no fixed address has appeared at Oxford Magistrates and pleaded guilty to drink driving. Rail passengers in Reading are being warned of a five-day closure on parts of the network this February half-term. Services from Reading to Bracknell, Guildford and to Gatwick Airport will all be affected. Network Rail is upgrading signalling, which is more than 50 years old. Passengers are advised to check before they travel. The Royal County of Berkshire show will go ahead in September for the first time since 2019. The show's organisers have confirmed the agricultural event will take place at the Newbury Showground on the 16th and 17th of September. Its chairman, Steve Ackrell, says it will have more of a local feel, promoting agriculture, horticulture and rural skills. Now, villagers campaigning to block a housing development on a meadow that's home to a rare white badger have come up with an idea that they hope will convince the planners to think again. Yes, yeah, 60,000 people have signed a petition and campaigners are working with local teachers to create a meadow school and a community orchard at Ifley. They say it'll support children who rarely get a chance to escape their urban landscape. Wesley Smith tells us more. The people of Ifley want to protect their oasis of calm, barely a couple of miles from Oxford city centre. They say they understand there's a desperate shortage of affordable housing across the county, but this just isn't the place to build 32 new properties. We are already achieving that balance in Ifley and that there is a form of playing field allocated for 90 to 120 homes just 200 metres away from this meadow. Um, which would be a much less harmful place to build. But we would like to see housing prioritised on brownfield sites first. Campaigners say that the infrastructure simply isn't here in Ifley to have this development on this site. That's at least without widening this pathway, which is popular with both walkers and joggers. If you come through here, well, this is where the magic really begins. A home to Luna the Badger and her family. Caught on night vision camera, this is Luna and the other badgers whose set is well established here. Peggy Seeger has called Ifley home for 12 years and a chance encounter had a huge impact, spurring her on at the age of 87 to fight to save Luna's home. We got fish and chips at the Prince of Wales, my partner and me, and it was a beautiful night so we thought, I'll walk along the road and as soon as I saw it, I thought, oh my lord. It was about this long, white, and it was sniffing around. It had smelled my fish and chips from miles away, and it came as close as that and just looked up 
and it almost was begging me for some fish and chips. I would have just said, do you want some vinegar and salt on it as well? When something is not like other things, you think there's something special. But every badger in this field is special. The badgers are protected, but that doesn't mean they couldn't be moved to make way for the houses. Occasionally badgers will stay in those new artificial sets, but it's by no means guaranteed. They will lose their foraging ground. It would just be devastating. Ox Place is the project set up by the City Council to build high-quality affordable housing. They want the new low-carbon homes on the Meadow Lane site to include 19 council properties let at social rent rates and 13 shared ownership homes for first-time buyers. Campaigners, though, have come up with their own idea for what they believe will be a better use of this space, a meadow school. So it's not building a school, but just getting students out to engage with nature. That, that cultural and historic significance for meadows in Oxford, uh, words like brock, uh, lees, mead, so blackbird lees and greater lees, our children in our school um, are often from blackbird lees and greater lees, uh, so, so that I think is an important part of, of that kind of historic and cultural importance. People against the houses say 15 months of construction traffic will blight their quiet village, which will be irrevocably urbanised once residents move in and the rare species and badgers are forced out. In a statement, Ox Place admits it's seeking a licence from Natural England which may affect the set, but insists it must deliver the homes Oxford badly needs. Responses need to be with the council by Friday the 10th of February. Wesley Smith, ITV News, Ifley. I mean, Luna, quite a mystical looking creature, but who knew they liked fish and chips? I didn't know that, but yeah. who can blame them? You well, know, they true. do smell good, don't they? Yeah, 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 salt and vinegar as well. We'll keep you uh, up to date on that campaign, of course. Now, you're watching ITV News Meridian in the Thames Valley. Still to come on the programme tonight, why downsizing is no longer the done thing. The rise in the over six is staying put for much longer. And despite a disappointing run, Oxford United boss Carl Robinson calls on his players and fans to stay together and stay strong. Well, more from us, of course, on our website. The details, as ever, on the screen. ITV.com slash Meridian is the address. You can call us 0808 10 10 095. And don't forget to follow us on social media. More news now and the pilot of a plane which killed 11 men when it crashed during the Shoreham air show is challenging the findings of an inquest into their deaths. The Hawker Hunter jet flown by Andrew Hill crashed onto the A27 during an aerial display in 2015. In December, a coroner ruled the victims were unlawfully killed. Mr Hill, who has no memory of the crash, has applied for a judicial review into the conclusion. A mother from Stubbington in Hampshire has been rewarded for her tireless campaigning to improve childhood cancer services. Charlotte Farrell's 10-year-old daughter Sophie died in September from a rare form of cancer. Charlotte's been awarded the Prime Minister's Points of Light Award. She spent 18 months creating a plan to improve diagnosis, research, patient experience, treatment and the experience of survivors. The number of people dying from alcohol in the South is the highest on record, up more than 50% over the last 20 years. Well, alcohol consumption rose sharply during the coronavirus pandemic and experts say they believe people are turning to drink again to cope with the cost of living crisis, with the cost of alcohol lagging behind the rate of inflation. Kevin Ashford has more. She was so full of life, um, so very like vibrant and, and funny. Joanne Good's 16-year-old daughter Megan died after coming home from a New Year's Eve party where she'd drunk an estimated litre and a half of high-strength cider. The coroner ruled that Megan had died in her sleep from what's known as dry drowning, where her stomach contents emptied into her lungs because of the alcohol. Joanne says the cheapness of the sort of drink that killed her daughter is a big danger. When you think £3.50 to £4, it's, you know... It is, it's pocket money prices. Kids are, kids get that, you know, and more money these days, you know. They could go out and maybe get two, three, four bottles of it uh, out of pocket money these days. It's just too cheap to, to be available for not just the young, like the young teenagers, the drinkers, but also the vulnerable, the most vulnerable of society. 
Joanne now campaigns to increase alcohol prices to discourage excessive drinking. Alcohol consumption is known to have increased during the pandemic lockdown and there are signs that many people are turning to drink to cope with the cost of living crisis too. This rehabilitation clinic at Banbury in Oxfordshire says it's no surprise alcohol is being used in this way. People tend to lean on things that give us comfort during, these t during times like this um, and due to that um, it's possibly turning people's usual dependencies into uh, an addiction so they would norm where they would normally just lean on that as a, as a temporary thing it's becoming more permanent for them. So I can announce that the planned increases in the duty rates for beer, for cider, for wine and for spirits will all be cancelled. Keeping alcohol prices down is a move that's usually warmly received in Parliament. The latest signs are that the cost of drinking is staying low relative to other increases. The rate of inflation is currently around 10.5%, but over the past year the price of beer has gone up by just 5.4%, spirits have gone up by 4.3%, the price of wine has gone up by just 2%. Meanwhile, the cost of soft drinks has gone up by 18%. Campaigners have called for government action on alcohol prices, as they say duty on alcohol has in effect been cut in nine out of the last ten years. The price of alcohol is the single most important driver of how much harm we see from alcohol, closely followed by availability and marketing. But in all national and international studies, price is the key thing. A government spokesperson said they were moving to a system where all alcohol be taxed according to strength, to support public health objectives and target the most harmful drinking. More details of government plans for the price of alcohol could be unveiled in next month's budget. Kevin Ashford, ITV News. Now the ITV Evening News continues with the national and international news at 6.30. With the details this evening, here's Charlene White. Coming up tonight, thousands are killed as two earthquakes hit Turkey and Syria. World leaders have scrambled to send rescue teams to help the search for survivors while the death toll keeps rising. In England, deadlock over pay sends NHS nurses and ambulance workers on their biggest strike in recent history. Plus shock in Surrey as a private school head is found dead with her husband and daughter and... Breaking the record for the most Grammy wins of all time. Beyonce makes history at the Grammys while a Brit superstar takes home the biggest prize. Join us for those stories and more from 6.30. Now, there are concerns that the stock of available larger family homes is being squeezed by a growing trend for older people to ditch downsizing and to stay put. Well, with fewer people choosing to do it, housing market experts claim it's leaving many young families stuck in cramped and impractical housing. With more, here's Nick Smith. In decades gone by, downsizing used to be the done thing, with older owners selling their big family home after the kids had long flown the nest. And with a nice equity payoff, spending their retirement in a smaller property, which is easier to maintain. But this assumption is becoming outdated. Chris Rowe is an estate agent in Burgess Hill in West Sussex and has seen a definite rise in the over 60s keen on staying put. I think that there's definitely a shift. I think mostly the older generation are scared of the process more than anything else. Um, in the UK, it's very difficult to buy a house until yours is on the market and actually putting yours on the market and filing a buyer is quite a big commitment. Um, you know, if you're slightly more vulnerable or on your own, um, to commit to moving without actually having somewhere to, to aim towards. Nationwide, there are more than 3.6 million homes that are owned by those aged over 65, which have at least two spare bedrooms. And these potential downsizer homeowners make up almost a quarter of all of our housing stock. But when surveyed, just a third of them say they plan to move into a smaller property in the near future, squeezing that pool of larger homes sought after by young families in the buyer and rental markets. It's reasonable for people to want to keep living in the home that they've made their home, that they have spare bedrooms for their family to come back and visit. But at the same time, we don't really tax homes according to their worth, their value. If you're living in a very large 
high value home, you're paying not very much more than someone living in a, in a much smaller home. So there's no real incentive to move out. A survey by Legal and General found almost half of older homeowners are reluctant to downsize because they were too attached to their current location and a third were worried they wouldn't find a suitable smaller property. They're definitely wanting to support family members, so those that are possibly moving back in that are looking to cut, cut back on their rent or cut, you know, literally come home and have a little bit more time with family and having that space I think has been really key. So I think it plays out generally. I don't think it's necessarily one particular factor of the housing market or the over 55s that this is an issue with. I think we're not building enough properties in, in this country. I mean, the government have been way behind on their uh, target of 300,000 properties a year and that's really been the issue. The over 65s are the country's fastest growing demographic and their increasing likelihood to stay in the family home long after the children have left means supply will continue to struggle to keep up with demand from younger parents looking for a place to raise their own families. Nick Smith, ITV News. A game plan that was spot on, culminating in a great achievement. The summary of Reading boss Paul Ince after his side came back from going two down to rescue a point at home to a promotion chasing Watford. Having conceded twice within the opening 50 minutes, the Royals' lifeline came in the form of Tom Ince's spot kick. And with 10 minutes on the clock, Jeff Hendrick volleyed home Reading's late equaliser. Oxford boss Carl Robinson called on his players and fans to stay strong and stay together after the U suffered a fourth straight defeat. This one by a single goal at home to inform Shrewsbury. And there was frustration at Fratton Park where Pompey boss John Messino described the mood as one of disappointment after his team failed to build upon Colby Bishop's opener, instead conceding a Barnsley equaliser just a minute from time. Jody Morris's first game in charge at Swindon wasn't the opener he'd had hoped for. The ex-Chelsea midfielder watched his new team go down to 10 men after just 14 minutes. Newport took advantage and when Tommy Adeloy pulled one back in stoppage time, it was though too little too late. Inform Gillingham, looking to stage their own great escape from relegation, denied Crawley anything from their encounter, leaving their opponents just one point off the drop. Neil Harris's side went ahead three minutes after the break, with midfielder Sean Williams firing home his first goal for the Kent side. Yeah, being a football fan, a bit rubbish sometimes. <laughs> it is sometimes, yeah. isn't it? Is it any better being a football manager, though? I mean, I guess at least oh, they're getting paid for it. But... Who would be a football manager? No. no, thank you. You know, at least it's you feel low as a fan, but as a manager, you're also getting all of the abuse as yeah, well. Yeah, absolutely. So. Not for me, thanks for no. that. No. <laughs> Andrew, thank Has you. its benefits, but the pitfalls are there, aren't Yeah, they? absolutely. <laughs> right, weather time now. With all the details tonight, here's Ashley Creevey. Feels like home, whatever the weather. Valent Boilers and Heat Pumps, sponsors ITV Meridian Weather. Hello there and a very good evening to everybody at home. Well, certainly some chilly starts to come this week, a frost for many of us. Mist and fog could be problematic in a few spots tomorrow morning. There could be some patches of freezing fog around as well. This is definitely one to note. Do take care if you are out and about in the roads. In general, though, that little bit cloudier by Thursday, but overall plenty of dry weather to come this week. So this is what's happening out there at the moment. High pressure largely in charge. Any weather fronts that run into that high tend to fizzle away. This high pressure then is going to hang on right the way through to the end of the week, slowly pushing its way eastward. So a subtle shift in wind direction by the end of the week means that we're going to drag in a little bit more in the way of cloud. Out there at the moment, though, a frost already starting to form in a few places. Some mist and fog is quite possible by the early hours of the morning. Some patches of freezing fog as well, but certainly a dry night for many of us. Temperatures, though, falling below freezing at their lowest, about minus three degrees Celsius. So a chilly old start to the day and some patches of fog quite possible as well. 
So do take care if you are out and about in the roads first thing tomorrow morning, but it is going to be another dry day. Lots of sunshine around, perhaps just a little bit more in the way of high cloud the further east you are. Temperatures down a degree or so on today, highs of around seven degrees Celsius, but still I think if you're out and about in the sunshine, there is just that little bit of strength in the February sunshine at the moment. Now the next high tide at Portsmouth is at 17 minutes past midnight and then again at 20 past 12 tomorrow evening. Now from Tuesday into Wednesday it's going to be another cold night of frost for many of us. Lots of sunshine to come on Wednesday and then cloudier and milder by Friday. Valent sponsors ITV Meridian Weather. Feeling rather chilly again at times, isn't it? Yeah. Right, in just a moment, the ITV evening news with Charlene White. Uh, but for now, uh, from us, that is all we've got time for this evening. Plenty more from us, of course, online. I'm back with your late update just after half past ten. Uh, but for now, from the team, thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. Bye bye.